Hello and welcome to episode 3. There's been a lot of bad news around recently, so let's focus on some of the good. Okay, our first story comes from Scotland. Thank you to Elizabeth Thompson who sent this to me. It's a fantastic story about a community coming together to face off the elements. Now, the north of the UK was hit towards the end of March by some quite bad weather. Severe snowstorms and gale force winds knocked out a lot of power in Scotland and Northern Ireland. But that didn't stop the community from coming together. Now, a couple of examples of this were the area of Kintyre and the Isle of Arran in Western Scotland. Now, the island itself was without power uh, for days. Only a couple of premises on the island still had power, which was hotels, where they had generators. So what they did, the hotels opened their doors to members of the public to let them come in, use the showers, warm up, have hot food. Um, members of the community went from house to house by torchlight, bringing blankets and food to elderly residents who couldn't get out or who were trapped in the homes. They checked on each other. They made sure everybody else was all right. There was a school trip from uh, West Yorkshire, from Calder High School, and they were stranded up there on a geology trip. So what they did, they helped out. They helped take food from the boat into the town. Everybody pitched in together to make it work. There was a wedding that still went on despite uh, having no power. It was all by candlelight, probably damn romantic. There was a ceremony to mark the sinking of the HMS Vandal that still went ahead. They did it by firelight and candlelight and they didn't let the weather stop them. They used it as a chance to bring the community together. It's a good example that community spirit still exists, that people can get together to just keep an eye on each other, make sure everybody's all right. Oh, and one last thing I've just heard about uh, the Isle of Arran is that tourism is up. Either because it's just a fantastic place to visit or because people found out about the amazing community spirit there. Loads of people booked for Easter and afterwards to try and flock into the area to see what that great community spirit is. What a fantastic thing. You do good things, good things will happen to you. Our next story is from Contamana in Eastern Peru. Found it on the Good News Network and there's some great footage on the BBC website as well. What happened was there was a flight that needed to take off late at night, an emergency medical flight. A mother with a newborn and a 17-year-old boy needed urgent medical attention. The flight wasn't able to take off because the runway had no lighting. So they called out on a local radio station asking for help, asking for anybody to help line the route with any vehicles, any lights they might have. Within half an hour, they had 300 vehicles there, all lining the route. They had cars and bikes and rickshaws, all there, all forming this runway, allowing them to take off. How fantastic is that? The community really coming together again when needed. Okay, this next story I saw in the Metro in March, and it's about a dog called Eddie who unfortunately lost his sight, and his guide dog Milo. Now, these dogs were friends from long before. They were both owned by the same owner, and... Eddie lost his sight, unfortunately, but Milo just picked up the reins and started taking him around, started leading him around, started being his guide dog, without being trained as a guide dog or anything else, just because they were such friends and so inseparable, one started leading the other around. There's some really nice footage of it on the BBC website as well, where you can see them playing together. I thought this was quite unusual, but when I went looking to try and find some more details on this, I found several other stories of dogs being guide dogs for other dogs. Now the second story I found that was similar to this was in The Telegraph and it's about a dog called Edward who was a guide dog for uh, Mr Graham Wasp and unfortunately Edward developed glaucoma and lost his vision as well. Miss Wasp was forced to get a second guide dog. Opal, the new guide dog, leads them both around now. There's a really moving interview with uh, Mr Wasp on The Telegraph website, I'll link to in the description below. And now they have this new family where they're both being led by another guide dog and it's just really sweet. I like the idea of guide dogs continuing to have active lives after something happens to them, something like this. I think that's really sweet. This next story I saw in the Global Post. Now a great dame called Lily sadly lost her sight as a puppy, but her friend Madison acted as her guide dog and took her around and took care of her. They were being taken care of by the Dogs Trust UK, a charity that takes care of dogs in need. For a while they had a hard time trying to find somebody to take care of them, but after their story broke, 2,000 people contacted the Dogs Trust offering to take care of these dogs, and now they've found a new home where they're happy. If you want to donate to the Dogs Trust UK, I'll have the link in the description below. Okay, this next story is from The Awesomer, and it is my favourite of the guide dog stories. It's about a dog called Tanner, who was blind from birth. Tanner unfortunately suffered from severe seizures, and it got to the stage where the owner had to take him into a clinic to be taken care of. Now, the clinic thought it may be best to actually put Tanner down. The seizures were getting more and more severe, and it was obviously putting Tanner through misery. Now while Tanner was at the clinic, another dog showed up, a dog called Blair, with its own issues. Blair had been shot. Now it had some real behavioural issues, was very shy, was obviously uh, recovering from an injury. 
And while these two dogs were there, they were out in the yard one day and started playing together. And not just playing together. Blair started leading Tanner around. Started taking hold of the leash and carrying him around. They started taking care of each other. And Tanner's seizures got better. Both Blair and Tanner started behaving better together. They started improving. They started healing each other. Uh, Blair's temperament issues got better. Tanner's seizures got better. They actually healed each other and now they're inseparable. I think it is a lovely story. Check out the full video on theawesomer.com. The link is in the description below. It's such a sweet story and the video of them two playing together of Blair leading Tanner around by leash is just adorable. Now this last one is a personal one for me. My brother, who is awesome, is running the Brighton Marathon this Sunday. He's doing it to raise money for Prostate Cancer UK, a great charity that's really close to our family's hearts. Now, if you're one of those people that loves giving money to charity, check out his Just Giving page. He's raised over a grand so far. He's doing really, really well. He's been training so hard for it. His knees are in bits, his whole body's wrecked. He is doing it to raise money for a really good cause. If you're wondering about the moustache, it's because we did Movember last year. I'm amazingly proud of him. He's awesome. Okay, this is the Kith segment where we suggest something all of us can do to make the world around them a little bit better. This week's one is blood donation. It's something I do, but not as regularly as I should. So this week, I'm going to make a conscious effort to get down to a blood centre and give some blood. Now, if you want to find a blood centre near you, check out blood.co.uk. That's if you're in the UK. The website is blood.co.uk. Or give them a call on 0300 123 2323. That's 0300 123 2323. There is an announcement on their website that they are desperately short of types O negative and B negative at the moment. They're having a real drive. Those are the ones where the stocks are really low. They urgently need some help. So if you are of type O negative or B negative, please, please get in touch with them. Please go and donate. Everyone's busy at the moment. Everyone's short of time. But it's something that can really help and not just help other people, but help you. Think of it as a um, banking system. You put in your blood so that when you get injured, if something, God forbid, should happen, then, you know, there's blood to go back into your body should you be losing copious amounts of it. Okay, that's the end of episode three. I hope you enjoyed those stories. If you have any good stories, please email me in dariosbarlondon at gmail.com. And I look to get you some new stories again soon.